Imagine this, the Quinjet from Avengers, the Razor Crest from Star Wars, the Pelican from Halo, and the Quad Tilt Rotor from Edge of Tomorrow, all roaring off the screen and into real life. For decades, these machines were pure science fiction. Vertical takeoff, jet speed, and the freedom to land anywhere. FAA officials called tilt rotors the most challenging certification in aviation history. A Pentagon report warned, the V-22's transition phase is a crash waiting to happen. But then, the world changed. DARPA, Bell, and Leonardo started flying machines that looked like they belonged in a blockbuster. And suddenly, the second VTOL revolution was real. This is the story of how vertical flight went from failed prototypes and fantasy to the next big leap in military and civil aviation. After hours digging through documentation, old news clippings, and test pilot interviews, I found a story that flips the script on what most people think about the future of flight. While everyone focused on helicopters and jets, a new breed of aircraft was quietly solving the problems that killed every VTOL dream for 70 years. What you're about to see is how sci-fi became a flight plan and why the next war and maybe your next commute will be vertical. The dream started in fiction. The Quinjet, the Razorcrest, the Pelican, and the Quad Tilt Rotor all imagined a world where aircraft could take off anywhere, hover, and then fly at jet speed. The military wanted the same. Runway independence, heavy lift, and the ability to go from ship to city to mountain in one hop. But the reality was brutal. Every attempt to build a jet speed VTOL ended in disaster. The 1950s and 60s were a graveyard of failed prototypes. Tail sitters like the XFY-1, lift jets like the XV-5, tilt wings like the XC-142. They crashed, burned, or were too complex for real pilots. The pain points were legendary. Downwash so strong it could flip trucks, heat that melted flight decks, transition phases that killed pilots, and noise that shattered windows. As NASA's own test summary put it, the transition from hover to forward flight remains the most dangerous phase for any VTOL. The sci-fi dream was alive, but the physics bill was always due. The graveyard of VTOL dreams has names you've never heard. The Convair XFY-1 Pogo, a tail sitter that required pilots to land while looking over their shoulder, blind. The Ryan X-13 VertiJet, strapped to a trailer it could take off vertically, but killed test programs with its impossible landing demands. The Lockheed XV-5, lift jets that melted flight decks and deafened ground crews. The Canadair CL-84, a tilt wing that worked, flew 800 hours, and was still canceled because the transition phase terrified every pilot who flew it. But the real killers were invisible. Downwash so powerful it could flip ground vehicles deck temperatures exceeding 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit that warped steel, blade vortex interaction noise that shattered windows a mile away, and the transition phase, that 10-second window between hover and flight where aerodynamics, control, and power had to dance perfectly or you died. NASA's own test summary put it bluntly, the transition from hover to forward flight remains the most dangerous phase for any VTOL. The V-22 Osprey proved it. 30 deaths during development, multiple crashes, and a 2023 fleet-wide stand-down after another fatal accident. This wasn't just engineering, it was a blood tax. Every VTOL that flew paid it. The question wasn't whether you could make a VTOL work. It was whether you could make it work without killing the people who flew it. And that's exactly what the second revolution had to solve. The first real VTOL winners were the Harrier, F-35B, and V-22 Osprey. The Harrier gave the Royal Navy and U.S. Marines a way to launch jets from small decks. The F-35B brought fifth-gen sensors and digital controls to the fight. The V-22 Osprey, born from the XV-15, became the world's first operational tilt rotor. Airplane speed, helicopter access, and three times the range of a Black Hawk but every winner paid a price. The Harrier's performance penalty, the F-35B's heat and weight, the Osprey's downwash and deck heat, and auto-rotation limits. 
The Osprey flew over 700,000 hours, but not without crashes, groundings, and a reputation for being too dangerous for civilians. As a Bell test pilot put it, the Osprey flies like nothing else, and that's both the promise and the problem. The first revolution proved VTOL could work, but it was always a compromise. Enter Italy. Leonardo didn't try to copy the V-22. They asked, what would a civil tilt rotor need to succeed? The AW609 was designed for 270 knots, pressurized to 25,000 feet, and built for known icing. Triple redundant fly-by-wire, two PT-6C67A engines, and a cabin that could carry two stretchers and five medics for EMS, or nine passengers for offshore missions. The missions were civil, emergency medical services, offshore oil and gas, parapublic and security, downtown to downtown city hops. The AW609 could fly Milan to Paris, helipad to helipad, over the weather, with no airport detour. Italy also tackled noise. NASA's tram program showed that blade vortex interaction, BVI, was the dominant noise source. The FAA issued tilt rotor noise rules in 2013, and Italy worked with NASA to model and reduce BVI. As a NASA engineer wrote, noise and downwash are the showstoppers for city VTOLs. The AW609 wasn't just a civil osprey, it was a clean sheet solution to the blockers that kept tilt rotors out of cities and offshore pads. The next leap came with the Army's V-280 Valor and the Bell Boeing Quad Tilt Rotor. The V-280 fixed the Osprey's pain points, non-tilting engines, better egress, easier maintenance, and 280 plus knots with three times the range of a Blackhawk. The quad tilt rotor was never built, but its wind tunnel tests shaped the next generation, Sprint and HSV toll. DARPA's Sprint program, with Bell as the lead, aims for 400 to 450 knots, a stop-fold rotor that transitions to jet thrust, with first flight expected by 2027 to 2028. Leonardo's AW609 and NGCTR are pushing civil certification, with the NGCTR flying in December 2025, non-tilting engines, split gearboxes, and 280 knots. China's R6000 is a large tilt rotor drone, V280 style, showing the global race is now US, EU, and China. The second revolution is about speed, reliability, and who can make VTOL work for both war and peace. The VTOL story is more than a technical saga. It's a lesson in persistence, innovation, and the power of turning fiction into fact. Sci-fi inspired the engineers, the military paid the price, and now civil certification is making VTOL a reality for everyone. The Quinjet isn't just a movie prop anymore, it's a flight plan. The second VTOL revolution is here. 400 plus knots, no runway, no limits, and the world's most advanced aircraft are being built by the teams who refuse to accept impossible. What's your verdict? Is this the moment sci-fi finally lands in the real world? Or is the next leap still ahead? Let's talk in the comments. And if you want more stories where the impossible becomes real, hit subscribe and join the conversation. The next time someone says, that's just sci-fi, they might be watching the next revolution take off.